projector. This is my slide. It's blank, just like the last one. nervous action that I do. I can't help it. Well, my name is Rick Deacon. I'm doing a presentation on cross-site scripting on MySpace. Um, get started. I have notes, just so everyone knows that's what I'm doing down here. A little bit about me. I'm 20. I uh, work as an IT specialist at a CPA firm in Beechwood. I'm not really sure what IT specialist means. They gave me that title. I don't like it very much, but I can't change it. Uh, basically, I do network administrator type stuff, usually. Um, I'm also a part-time student at Lorain County Community College and University of Akron, studying for a bachelor's in networking through uh, University of Akron. I have personal experience in IT for seven years and security for about four. I had an article published in 2600 Magazine relating pretty much to the same thing that I'm doing a presentation on, although it's a little bit different. Other things I do, I uh, work on my car, I'm into music and whatnot. But this is an overview of basically what I'm going to be talking about. Um, as if anyone didn't know, I'll be talking about what MySpace is, what cross-site scripting is, um, how to uh, find cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, the ones that MySpace has, how to exploit them, protection from them, tools that I use, and the closing. And as you can read, as my little disclaimer in the bottom, the presentation is not really, it, it's a how-to, but it's not going to tell someone without any knowledge how to do anything. So it's, it's meant to keep script kitties away. So if this were to ever go somewhere else, publish somewhere or whatever, for whatever reason, that one, someone wouldn't just be able to pick this up and then do it. But then I have some technical knowledge. MySpace.com obviously is one of the largest social networking sites, if not the biggest. I'm sure many of you people know that. Uh, it's driven by various dynamic web applications, profiles, searches, you know, there's chat rooms, there's classifieds, music pages, there's video, they just implemented a new uh, news site that is like Dig. Um, it's obviously has a huge impact on society today. It's in, it's in TV, it's in media, it's in radio. I mean, I was just talking to my girlfriend the other day and we were talking about how everybody knows everybody because MySpace just opened up a whole new world of being able to talk to whoever you want to from wherever. It just ends up, you know, you knowing everybody exactly what I have there. You know, who knows who goes where. You can find a lot of information from people about in, on MySpace. I mean, even sometimes people make the mistake of posting information that they really shouldn't be giving out to, you know, public internet. But, you know, your name and address, where you work, that's all listed sometimes on your front page, depending on how discreet you are about it. Your hobbies, your cars, as in what you drive, so people may actually know exactly what your car looks like if, you're, if you have a picture with it. I mean, you can give out some pretty good information about yourself without you even knowing it. Given all the information that you could get from MySpace, it has very minimal security. I mean, it's, it's vulnerable to all of these various attacks. Social engineering, obviously phishing, tons of people get their profiles hacked, quote unquote hacked, daily by clicking links and thinking they're logging into MySpace and they're actually just giving it to a phishing site and then some later, someone later is just you know, logging in as them and whatnot, spreading, spreading the virus some more. Packet capture over a public network, um, MySpace viruses, spam, malware, spyware, all gets posted in the same thing that has to do with phishing, URL injections, cross-site re request forgeries, and cross-site scripting. All of those vulnerabilities can be exploited on MySpace, and like I said, given the information, that's, that can be pretty dangerous. Some of the famous ones, if you read any security sites, or even Dig, I believe, posted most of these, the Sammy viruses, very popular. He, programmed the one, uh, the one script to actually propagate itself and then friend people over and over. And he 
had like a million friends in no time. And they didn't have to accept it either. They would just, he would just get all these friends. That was big, and that was on a lot of news sites over the time. It used cross-site scripting as well, but a lot more, a lot more scripting that's involved and a lot more involved than what I'm going to be talking about. QuickTime virus wasn't too long ago. I believe it still sort of is in place that you can still exploit it in some manners. What it did was basically you went to a person's page who had these, this QuickTime movie that they got from visiting another person who had it, and it played, and then at the end of it, which actually there was no video at all, but at the end of it, it, it just um, executed JavaScript, and then it uh, made itself propagate onto the next person who viewed his profile. It just kept going and going, and what it did at the same time, we also added a phishing bar at the top of your, uh, your page, so you click login. It looks like a page that is the normal login, but it's actually the site that's phishing for passwords. And they also is vulnerable to the Windows Meta file, which was a while ago, but it was vulnerable to that at the same time. Cross-site scripting is um, basically, it's a vulnerability that can be found in very, very many web applications. It's, it's very common in tons of places. Basically what it does is allow, it allows code injection of various sorts, HTML, JavaScript, you can do PHP, anything you need to into it, uh, and you can encode it into hex or Unicode or anything like that can actually put it in and execute it. It can be used for phishing or browser exploitation, as in um, you can actually sometimes execute arbitrary code that would crash a browser, and then you can't really do too much beyond that. There, there, I'm sure there are ways to do it, but, and then obviously phishing, that's a big thing, that's whatever. I mean, it's still, it's still all over with the phishing, the phishing sites all over MySpace. You go to tons of people's profiles and you see it all messed up. Um, one of the bigger things it's used for is session hijacking and cookie stealing, which what you do is steal the cookie using cross-site scripted link that's encoded. We'll talk about that later because that's basically what the presentation is about. Um, to find cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, it's very easy. All you need to do is insert a simple script into a URL. It, it really is simple, and I'll talk about that now. Here's how to do it, basically. How to embed, this, this one is embedding JavaScript into a hyperlink. As you can see, the hyperlink is if it's, it's using trustedsite.org search application. That's just obviously just the site that I came up with. And you enter the, under the criteria, you would tell it to run script alert XSS, which would open, it would uh, come up, an alert would pop up as soon as you click the link that said XSS. And that would mean that it's vulnerable because you just put basic JavaScript into the URL. And it's LOL interwebs. <laughs> it's the actual name of the link that would come up instead of actually seeing anything funny that would look weird. And like it says, you will see a warning box if it's successful. And then you know right away that it's, it's susceptible to cross-site scripting, which I'm now going to refer to as XSS because it's quicker. Um, same link structure can be used to display cookie information, which means instead of putting that script or the alert, you could just tell it to alert document.cookie. And it would actually just pop up your cookie. And you see it right there. Um, you could redirect to a malicious script if you had it on your own web server. You could have it redirect to a JavaScript that you have just sitting anywhere, and it would run it because it doesn't know the difference at that point. And there's a lot of other ways, the things you can do with it as well that I'll talk about. If you don't, if you're not familiar with cross-site scripting, I'm not going to be talking a whole lot more about what it is or how to do it. Well, I will be talking about how to do it on MySpace, but other than that. If you don't have a lot of information on it, you can just go to the Wikipedia page that I have at the bottom of my, the, this slide here, and, or you can just search Google. There's a ton of pages with cross-site scripting just defined all over the place. Um, here, we'll talk about MySpace and cross-site scripting. It, MySpace uses cookies, and they're not tasty. They're just cookies that I'm sure you guys are all aware of. They're just stored in the computer. It uh, contains session and login information as well as sometimes your email address, and there has been speculation, although I'm not going to 100% say it, that, that there is uh, passwords, encrypted password in there too, using some sort of hashing. Haven't really delved into that too much. Not really interested in that. Um, and it also contains, oddly enough, past search criteria on MySpace. Never really figured that one out, but it is in there. Um, the session information obviously can be used for session hijacking, which is what we're going to be discussing. Discussing, and there are hundreds of undetected and discovered, and undiscovered cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. There, are, you, all you have to do is just look around, go to various pages, try the try the link that I posted, the other one where you just tried to do the 
cross-site scripting uh, with the JavaScript. You just put that into any link that you can find that looks like it uses a web application that has search criteria, you know, an equal sign or a question mark equal sign. That would all, you can just put that in and see if it works. All you gotta do is create a link, send it to yourself, or send it to something else and see if it works. Simple as that. If it pops up, you got one. Um, the exploit I'm gonna be talking about is actually in the browse function of the site, which is actually MySpace's version of search. I found it using trial and error, just like I was describing, just plugging it into different URLs, and I found this one. It uses a cross-site scripting hole, obviously. Requires a web server with the capability of running a CGI file, so you need to have your own web server with, I mean, one that you've either run out of your house or one that you're buying from a company, just renting for a while. Something that can run a CGI, basically. And uh, before I get into the CGI and all the other coding and stuff, I'm not a programmer by any means, so I, I'm not 100% I'm not on all of programming or anything like that, so I don't want to come off as anything like that. I, I, I kind of despise programming. I don't really like it too much. It's too hard for me. Maybe I'm just dumb, but hey. Like I said, it, it re lies in the browse, which is the user search feature. Um, this exploit was used in this case to steal cookies and to hijack current user sessions in order to take full control of their accounts. Basically, you uh, grab the information, take over their account, and you're them. I'm going to go into detail, but that's basically it. The exploit has been patched uh, previous to the presentation. It was probably patched about a year ago, but this is showing you how to do it, and this exact, this exact way that we're going to do it can be used with any other cross-site scripting vulnerability that you find on MySpace. This is, uh, this is just one I'm using an example, so I have an actual URL to show you guys. And that also pertains to what I said in the beginning about it not, it's not really leaning itself towards uh, script kitties. You can't really do anything with this, with this particular one anymore. You've got to find your own. This is the URL. I'll let you guys look at it for a second, obviously. It's just the URL, so it's kind of retarded just sitting up there. But uh, you can pick some of it apart. Obviously, some of it's encoded. You can see the MySpace, searchresults.myspace, and then the index.cfm. Um, and then it's a little encoded. It says document, location, your, see your web server, cookiestealer.cgi, document.cookie, and you're doing the end script tags. I'll talk about why it's encoded in a few minutes. The cross-site scripting actually started after the search request equals, just like I talked about. Um, the JavaScript points to a CGI file that runs on a web server that I talked about as well. Um, it records document.cookie. What it actually does, the CGI file takes document.cookie that you called with the JavaScript, it takes it and records it to your uh, text file of choice that you told it to log to in, CG, in the CGI file which, like I talked talk a little bit about before, it could be easily replaced with a redirect to malicious code in a foreign domain by using almost the exact same structure, except you wouldn't put uh, plus document.cookie. You would just put you know, malicious.js for the JavaScript file or whatever else you were going to use. Um, as you saw, part of it was encoded in hex. And this is what the link actually read. If you take out the hex, you can see it actually does an, an end quotation and then... Uh, carrots, right carrot, and then the left carrot to document that location. And then you can actually see the exact, what to type in in order to uh, have it log the document that cookie. And that's the exact link right there. And that would completely, back in a year ago, that would completely trick MySpace's, the MySpace's uh, system at the time to let you actually do that. And, and like I said, the, the method of evasion used here, which was just encoding in hex, actually has been patched. You can't do this anymore with just hex. There's plenty of other ways to do it, which I'm going to talk about, but the hex way is, is patched. I, unless you find one that they missed, then you're not going to be able to use just the straight hex encoding. I think, I think some Unicode still works, though. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to say that for sure, but I'm pretty sure some of it still works as far as that goes. And like I said, there's a lot more ways to evade the filter on MySpace, and there's also plenty of ways to do it on other sites, too, that use the same sort of filter evasion. Trial and error is good. I mean, a lot of you guys know about, you know, um, just using spaces and whatnot. There's ways to do it where you can actually, you know, put breaks, like 15 of them. And since JavaScript, in certain cases, doesn't take the breaks as actual, uh, as actual part of the, uh, the line of code, you can put, you know, G or J-A, 
you know, you have 15 breaks and then VA script, and that would be, you know, the whole word JavaScript. However, you just evaded the filter because it, it didn't actually pick up the, the JavaScript didn't pick up the breaks, but MySpace saw the breaks, or any site for that matter saw the breaks. And that site that I have posted, ha.ckers.org slash xss.html, that has extremely, extremely good ways to evade cross-site scripting filters. It's also, it's used as a, um, a cheat sheet. That's what actually what it's called if you go to the site. It's a cheat sheet of just tons of information on how to evade the filters and tons of information on how to enter it into a URL and try to beat it using different encoding. You mean, if you go to that site and you take one of their links, you really don't even have to do any work. All you have to do is enter your own web, your web server in there with, your, with the file that you need. Now what we're going to talk about to do with the URL, and if you don't have a MySpace account and you wanted to try this, you need one. Sorry about that. I know a lot of people avoid MySpace because it's kind of retarded sometimes. <coughs> it's kind of it's lame at points too, but for this, for this particular example, you kind of need one. Um, after you take the link that you created, which is encoded in the hex to evade the filter, you can distribute it to any number of people. Bulletins, chat rooms, forums, classifieds, messages, any of those things would work perfectly fine. My favorite was posting bulletin on a fake account. Obviously, I wouldn't use my main account because people would, you know, people would be mad at me. I can't do that. And then, um, and then people would click it. And I'm actually going to show you in a moment. I'm going to show you the cookie log itself that I actually, it's my live cookie log right now. So don't be looking at it too hard. And um, uh, yeah, so you need a MySpace account and you can distribute it in any way you like. A lot of the things, a couple of the things actually filter more than others. So for a while, forums very basically didn't do anything. So you could post anything you wanted on a forum. As far as JavaScript and whatnot, it, they didn't filter anything for some reason. Like they didn't keep up with it. So that was a good one for a while. More interesting methods, um, you could actually have it do automatically. Like the way we have it set up here and the way I'm showing you, the user has to click a link, which isn't a big deal because the front of the link, as you saw, started with searchresults.myspace. So if they were just to, you know, mouse over and say, oh, searchresults.myspace, and you know how it, it truncates the link towards the end, so it just puts dot, dot, dot. You don't actually see the cross-site scripting in, in the link itself, so it looks normal to most people. Most people would click it without even thinking about it because you, they see, you know, search on MySpace doesn't look bad, you know, it looks fine to me, so then you would click it. But there's actually other ways to embed various things into your page or anywhere that would just automatically do it. They won't even need to click anything. All they would need to view, view a page, which they would normally view. You could even post it on their home page. So they go to their own home page, you post it in their comments, and they just did it. And you don't even have to do anything more than that. But a couple ways to do that was the QuickTime virus, like I talked about, that's patched. I don't think there's any way really around it, although I've heard some things about doing it some certain ways. Um, the new one, which hasn't been fully implemented on MySpace, but a lot of people have been messing around with it, is you know putting uh, scripts in a JPEG image and changing the uh, HT access file to take the, uh, the image as text. All you gotta do is add a line into the HT access on your server that you're running it, and then uh, it will actually take the uh, Take the, the image as text and run the script, and you can embed it just like an image. IMG SRC, the normal HTML code to do it. it it'll do it like that. Iframes on different sites. A recent exploit that I heard about used iframes on your own site, and because it didn't, it did domain generalization. It was a big thing about how MySpace. If you link off of another site, they don't filter any sort of JavaScript at all, if that makes sense. You can put an iframe on your own page that links to MySpace in the iframe. And since you're in the uh, iframe on your own page, it doesn't have any JavaScript uh, filtering. So you can type whatever the hell you want to in there. No big deal. Or one something I did for a while was uh, action script using Flash. You can have a little Flash animation on your page that at the same time is stealing the cookie. Because it's sending them to a link in like another another uh, small box or a pop-up or an iframe, and they wouldn't even notice because you're just playing a regular regular flash, flash file. Many of the methods, like I said, have been used, reported, and patched. A lot of these have been patched. Uh, MySpace is pretty strict about iframes right now, so you can't really do too much with them. Unless, like I talked about, you do it on your own domain. Another whole presentation, you could talk about that for half an hour. There are a ton of methods that yet to be discovered. Anything that you can think about that you can run a script, may not be filtered, you can 
do it. So there would be, you know, maybe a Windows media file or some other sort of QuickTime type virus, some other sort of flash, because, I mean, MySpace is trying to cut away with, I mean, a lot of you probably know the code to just using HTML to embed SRC, embed source, and they filter that. But there's other ways to do it. And if you can do that, then you can still probably use the flash, the flash method. Okay, once you've logged a cookie after someone's clicked it, you're going to see that. That's the cookie. Looks like nothing right now. I'm actually going to show you. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you my desktop not helping me. There is my cookie log right now. This is actually I just pulled it off my server before you guys walked in the room. Since I saved it as a text file, it has no formatting. And it goes forever, but you can see if you like. What am I seeing here? Let's see if I can pick anything out right away. I mean, there's email addresses in here, so you can go tell the person who clicked my link, hey, you're retarded, you clicked the kid's link. Um, there's something that says uh, rafflecopter. I'm not sure why it's there, but it's rafflecopters in there. Um, maybe that was the link. Oh, this is my, my buddy Brian's page. He clicked my link. Um, yeah, but that's basically, I mean, obviously this looks like complete crap. You're not going to be able to pull anything interesting out of this at the moment. I'll tell you in a minute what you need. There's an email address. Don't know who that is, but they clicked it. Or they clicked it through someone else. Oh, rolling fungi. I don't get that either. Hey, you know what? All right, back to this. All right, so you have this. Once you log the cookie, you get that. You go into your log, which... It's probably stored in the same file that you have stored in the same folder as you stored your CGI file in. Where it is for me, anyway. This is the portion that we want, though. My user info. It usually ends with a semicolon. So after that last R, there will be a semicolon. And that usually signifies the end of my user info. And that is the user session. The live session that they just clicked, you now have. <laughs> Say hello to the user session because you now have it, obviously. Um, I'll talk about why time, of a, time is of the essence in a moment, but it is. What you have to do from this point, though, is log into MySpace, which you normally would. Pick a cookie editor of your choice for your browser. I use Firefox, so I use Add and Edit Cookies. And basically, you open it up. And like, I, like it says there, any, most of them work nice. I mean, it's a cookie editor. You can't, you can't mess that up too much. And then uh, you can even do it the, the old, the old fashioned way if you want to just go into your temp files and edit it. That's going to do the same thing, but cookie editor is a lot quicker. And like I said, time is sometimes of the essence, well, all the time actually. So you find your current MySpace cookie for looking something for looking something similar to the one that I just pulled up, the big long one. If you want the whole cookie, look for that in yours. So take the person's my user info, copy paste it, go to your cookie, find your my user info, paste over it, save the cookie, and refresh your browser. And you are now the person. You're on their home page, and you are them. There's anything else. And like it says there, you know, um, you're not logged in. And to confirm, look at the top of the screen. Make sure it says welcome. And a name that is probably really lame and involves some bad music, because that's what a lot of people have on MySpace, is their display name. Or, you know, like my black, sart, my black heart soul in August, or something retarded like that. Just look for something lame. That isn't yours, obviously. And rejoice, because you, you did it. You're done. You are now them. Do anything you want to. Like it says, one thing you can do, I mean, there's a number of things you can actually do once you're logged in. You can distribute your link. You can start taking the same link you sent to that person and post a bulletin on their page. Send the link to all their friends. And then uh, you can fish for passwords if you're really lame. I don't do that, though, because it's stupid. So much better just you know, do it the hard way. Come on. Uh, you could ruin relationships, too. A lot of people have friends that they really like or, you know, girlfriends or whatnot, boyfriends, whatnot on MySpace. If you get on MySpace, you could send bad messages to people and ruin some relationships. I wouldn't recommend that. Friend, other friendly hijinks, you know, you go on your friend's page and post porn. Other things, go see, you know, write, write is the main page. You know what I mean? Write huge, just blow it up, no big deal. Um, and you can also do anything that no person who normally authenticated do. Besides, you can't change your password because you don't know it. That's the only thing you can't really do. You don't know the password. All you did was copy-paste the cookie. So you can't do that. But anything you normally could do, no big deal. And if, like it says there, from here on out, it's all you. I mean, whatever you do with the information I just gave you and whatnot, that's all what you do and whatever you feel like doing with it. Limitations of this. Like I said, time is of the essence. 
Um, the session only lasts until the, the, the user actually clicks the logout button. If they click your link and they're somewhat computer savvy and they notice, oh wow, I just got redirected to some page and nothing's going on, then they might, you know, close their browser instead of hitting back. If they close their browser, that automatically logs you out of MySpace, unless you have some sort of automatic thing or you have downloads open or something. Um, so it only lasts until they log out. So you need to actually do it before they log out. There may be a way to set the cookie to never expire. Like, so I mean, that also is the case if you have this cookie, you copy paste it into your browser, you're now them. And if they log out and you log out, it's gone. It's not gonna help you. But there may be a way to actually set it to never expire. I've never actually got it to work, but I've heard of people that have. So I'm sure there's a way to do it. If you're more savvy than me, you can do it. Um, another limitation is if the person does notice something's wrong, say you go to their page and post Goatee, they're going to know who did it probably because they just clicked the link, something weird happened, and now they have Goatee. So, you know, they might figure out whose link they clicked and that it was you and not be happy with you. And you may hurt your friend's feelings. There's a little bad face to uh, make sure that you know that that's a bad thing. You don't want to do that. Uh, this month actually was the unofficial month of MySpace bugs. I don't know if you guys, any of you saw that. Because of such, all the decent zero-day exploits were overrun by script kitties, and MySpace fixed them all. So I had nothing good to show you guys that I could actually demonstrate. So, sorry about that. Everything good was ruined. I'm not a big fan of month of MySpace bugs. No offense to anybody who's friends with them or knows them or is trying to help out. No offense. I just, what they're doing is they're kind of lame about it. So, sad face again. That's a bad thing. Dangers of XFS, I mean, there are a lot, but I'm going to go through a couple. Vulnerabilities on sites are found daily, like to any site you can imagine that uses dynamic uh, web applications. Usually big sites, no one really cares about small sites, but um, if you go to any given security site, I use uh, PacketStorm security, um, Millworm sometimes has them, um, slackers.org has them. That's like a site for web application security and whatnot. Often uh, cross-site scripting is overlooked or and considered not critical because they're so prevalent that people think, eh, they're all over the place. Why is someone going to pick mine? You know what I mean? Sites like that. And because of that and because of laziness or money or whatever other reason, they're not patched or fixed for long periods of time. MySpace obviously does it, but they have so many that they can't keep up with it. But they do it because, I mean, multi-millions of users, so they do it because, you know, they try to make people happy, which doesn't really make any sense because it's free, but whatever. Um, it could lead, lead to leaking personal information, like I talked about a little bit. Um, it could lead to, uh, th this isn't on MySpace, obviously. You don't enter your credit card in MySpace. I'm talking about just in general. Um, it could lead to leaking to personal information, credit card fraud, identity theft, or worse. I'm not sure exactly why, but worse, because I can't think of anything worse that you can do unless they stalk and kill you with your personal information. But that's about as worst it can get. But either way, you don't want to get your credit card stolen or identity theft or all that junk anyway. Um, a lot of corporate websites, banks, et cetera, schools, have tons of these vulnerabilities all over them. So if the site uses cookies and you have found a cross-site scripting vulnerability, you can exploit it just like you would have. Like I just showed you how to do on MySpace. Same thing. Even if they don't use cookies, you can still use it to exploit various things. You can still send it to redirect someone and have them <laughs> type in. If it has a cross-site scripting, you could set up your own fake phishing page on a bank, which is a lot more profitable, I would imagine, than the uh, phishing page on MySpace. Because you can do a lot more with the credit card numbers. Um, and it also, a lot of other sites also contain other web vulnerabilities, which I'm not going to cover because there are hundreds of thousands. How to protect yourself from cross-site scripting is kind of logical. Just log out of MySpace when you're done. Don't let it sit there for hours and hours. Don't click looks, links that look funny. If you can tell that the links look kind of retarded, you probably shouldn't click it. Don't check Remember Me, because that actually is the one that you saw my uh, couple people's uh, email addresses in there. When you click Remember Me, that sends it to your cookie. So if you don't check that, your email address isn't going to be in the cookie. Not that it really matters, because they already have your cookie, and they're going to log in anyway, but still. You could download an IDS for your browser, which is uh, intrusion detection system, if you didn't know what that means. Um, you can actually get that for Firefox now. There's a pretty good couple decent ones out. I'm pretty sure there's a couple for Internet Explorer as well, so don't quote me on that. 
And all of these principles can be used outside of MySpace. If you're on a bank website, don't leave it open. If you see a link that looks funny for a bank, don't click it. Don't check or remember. I never check. I mean, one of our policies, like I said, a CPA firm, since I'm a network administrator, one of our policies is that if you check something like Remember Me, you, um, you get beaten with your computer. How to protect your website if you have one that uses dynamic web applications. And there's a lot of ways. I just listed a few obvious ones. To validate input, that's always good. Secure user cookies, kind of difficult, but it's possible. Um, apply the JavaScript filters that we talked about, the ones that you know make you encode. You can even go further than MySpace if you really, really, really feel the need to. I mean, they do work. They stop a lot of people from doing a lot on MySpace. So granted, there are ways around them. It stops the common folk from just doing whatever they feel like doing. Don't allow cross-domain scripting. Do not store important information in cookies, which and use encrypted sessions, which is always good as well. These are the tools that I use. I don't know if you can really read it, so I'll read it out loud, too. It's kind of tiny up there. Um, since I use Firefox, these are good extensions that I use. Tamper Data, which is actually, it edits and views HTTP requests, which is very helpful if you are into web security. Edinetic Cookies I already spoke about, which is what I use to edit the uh, Firefox cookies. There. And it's, it's very easy to use. It lists them. And, like it lists the domains on the left, and if you click them, it shows it exactly on the right. It's real easy to copy paste into that in that one. I like it. Um, Firebug, which I recently discovered not too long ago, is awesome. It, it actually lets you debug and modify web code as you're sitting there looking at it. So, although it's not really related to this particular presentation, if you know what SQL injection is, it's great for it because, say, there's a, um, you know, the input isn't validated beyond just a simple script sitting on the page, like a bank, per se, just as an example. If you know it's not validated after it's sent, and there's just an application that says, make sure no one types in nothing, or zero, or one, or you know whatever, any sort of JavaScript that they actually have sitting on the page, you can actually just take that out, just while it's sitting there. And it'll still use all the server, uh, all the configurations if it was still on the internet. It obviously will only be, it won't be actually put on their website, that's obvious. But it'll be locally for you, so you just took out the filtering without even doing anything. You don't have to save and edit anything. It does it right there. And it's really easy to use, and I, I like it. I would make it, recommend anyone, if you're not going to do anything else with this, just take a look at that, because it's, it's really neat. And then the Firekeeper is the IDS I was talking about. I haven't used that too much, but it's an intrusion detection system, so it'll tell you when you're about to do something stupid. Um, Hackbar helps helps find SQL injection and cross-site scripting holes. It's, um, it's not point click, here's the exploit, have fun, but it does help out with a lot. It's not, it, it definitely isn't for script kiddies. You need to know what you're doing before you use it. But switch proxy, it's kind of obvious. It helps you switch proxy. Keep anonymous information off the, or keep you anonymous while you're browsing or doing whatever you may be doing. Uh, Tor button, which is used with Tor and Vidalia, which is a peer-to-peer -peer proxy. Basically, it takes a bunch of people run the same program, and it bounces the information all over the internet. So you're as anonymous as you could be with it. And that button in Firefox enables it and disables it really quickly, so you don't actually have to do anything else. Peros is a uh, web vulnerability scanning proxy, which you, you just run it, and then you go into your proxy settings, change your proxy settings to run off of local host. It'll go through this Peros, and it brings up it can spider all these sites. It can spider, which is just going through all the directories, finding every file it can possibly find. It scans for uh, it scans for web vulnerabilities like SQL injection and cross-site scripting. It'll actually scan for them automatically. Um, it'll give you any other misconfigured web server errors or you know anything that it can find that like you know like a configuration file that's not locked for whatever reason or isn't properly hidden that's in like a default location, say for Apache or something. It'll actually show you where it's at and whatnot quickly. Acunetics or vulnerability scanner, which if I'm not mistaken actually costs money. But the demo worked great. So I tried it out for a couple couple things and it was good. And Nikto and Wicto, which is uh, web pen testing utilities for Linux and Windows. And it's sort of like Peros, except you don't run it like a proxy. You just sort of run it against the site. It works well, though. They're good. Getting towards the end here. The conclusion, obviously, is MySpace is a hacking sandbox. So if you ever really want to mess with some web application security, MySpace is not a bad place to start because there's a lot of things you can mess with. There may, I think there's also, I've never tried it myself, but I'm pretty sure there's SQL injection uh, 
holes in the site as well. So you can mess with that if you know what that is. Um, there's a lot you can do with that. Endless possibilities, like it says up there. There's so many things you could find just by taking the time to do it. You take a couple hours, you probably could find five holes without even, without even racking your brain. Just typing in the put it on copy paste, enter it, see if it's there. If it works, great. If it doesn't, whatever. But you you could find them so easily. Or if you feel lazy, you could just Google it, and there's web forums that uh, people like post the you know, the full disclosures of the exploits just sitting right there while they're while they're zero day. They're uh, they're not reported. They're not patched. All you got to do is Google for that if you're feeling lazy. I mean, if you want to try this when you get home, that's all you have to do. Um, uh, you can learn ideas and methodology, methodologies that can be used in more useful hacks, like I talked about. If you really wanted to, obviously, I don't, I don't uh, try to uh, tell anybody to do anything malicious, and I don't do it myself. Besides just toying around with information and whatnot, so I wouldn't say that you know, cracking a bank with cross-site scoping is a good idea. But I mean, if you really want to do it, that's that's up to you. Have fun in jail. But um, um, yeah, you can. The thing you learn just from this presentation could be used on hundreds of thousands of sites. You could uh, completely open up new holes and report. I mean, if you even just knowing this could get you a job per se. If you were to go to a site, find these holes, and say, "Hey, and you know what, guys? If you have all these holes, you need to hire me so I can fix them." And be like, "All right, whatever," and then um, that'll get you a job. So you need to have fun with it too. It's always fun to mess around with MySpace. MySpace in general is fun because it's so stupid. On that note, you should friend me. If you have MySpace, that's my URL. You should write it down and friend me when you get home or when you get on your computer, which I'm sure is just sitting around somewhere in the building. So you should just friend me, just because. I talk about how lame it is. <laughs> that's my actual account. That's not my, my cross-site scripting account, as far as you know. And then um, that's my email address if for some reason you wanted to email me. I don't know why you would, but just in case you did. Um, basically, that's the closing. Does anybody have? Any questions or anything? I'm anything? Anything at all? No? 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 Okay. Whatever works. Well, that's pretty much it. Hope you liked it. Thank you.